Hello, I'm TJ Mahar. I've been on many a job interview as a software tester these past 20 years. On a job interview, to see how well a candidate might think on their feet and how they dig deep into, their, into the testing, the interviewer might present an ordinary item to the candidate that is unrelated to software testing. Uh, the item could be a phone, a calculator, a pen, or it could be a red swing line stapler you've borrowed off Milton Wadham's desk. I probably should return this to him before he uh, burns the place to the ground. Imagine you're at a job interview for a software testing position, and the interviewer asks you one of the warm-up questions, such as, picture the type of chair you would have at an office, use at a typical desk. Okay, now take a pen and paper out and try to answer the following question. How would you test this chair? So, how far did you get? Were you stumped? Or are you still going at it as if you're writing your first novel? Uh, feel free to stop the video if you need more time. Now, if you don't write in thinking how you operate the chair, uh, that's actually pretty good. Uh, when we're testing, it's good to creatively draw from our own previous experience. You might have pictured yourself attempting to sit in a chair and then get up from that chair, performing what we might term usability testing. You might have performed functionality testing. If the office chair has lumbar support built in, uh, you can check that, or you can see if uh, the seat raises and lowers along with the headrest. You can do a bit of load testing, imagining the normal usage of said chair, having people with smaller or larger bodies than yours attempting to use the chair, you could have pictured trying to move a chair around the room to see uh, to actually where the point where it should be located. With performance testing, you could have a machine emulate getting up and sitting down and getting up and sitting down and then measure the force of a body uh, sitting in the chair and standing in the chair and how that affects the joints of the chair. You could do security testing. How easy is it to steal the chair? But this line of exploratory testing can only get you so far. You see, software development, especially when it's using Agile, it's a group effort. You have craftsmen, such as the coders, actually building the components of the chair and putting them together. You have testers checking the quality of the finished product, both of the individual components, then when you put them back together doing integration testing. But uh, the product is much larger than that. You have business analysts who act as product owners. They present a list of the business requirements the, that the product, in this case an office chair, should have. Maybe the business analyst found that the chair should have features such as a softer seat, like the mesh of an Aeron chair, and that would cause it to sell more products. You have designers and the user experience people who present to the team what the product should look like and what the user of the product thought about the design. With the agile software development method, the product owner, the user experience people, the coders, and the testers, they all examine the requirements together. Without a list of business requirements, you don't know what features the chair should and should not have. Should the chair swivel? Uh, if there's a back to the chair or not? Uh, should there be a seat? Should there be a headrest? During the interview, after going into examples of usability testing and exploratory testing, load testing, stress testing, and performance testing, you can ask the interviewer that you would need to see the list of requirements. Why? A chair is made up of many different components, with each component having certain qualities. Only with the requirements in front of you can you actually see what should and should not be there in the product. Okay, let's say the office chair is black or brown, and the chair actually should be day glow pink. That is actually a bug. 
should the headrest, the backrest, the seat be cushioned? Or should it be in upholstered in leather for a fancy senior manager? If the requirements call for the seat, the back of the chair, and the headrest to be all one piece, and instead you have adjustable headrests and two metal poles connecting to the seat, that's actually a bug. What is the size and makeup of the back of the chair? The height and width of the back and seat of the chair? Should the chair have arms or not? How widely spaced should they be? How high and wide should the seat be? Does the chair have four legs? Or is it one pole leading to five separate feet, all with metal casters that allow the chair to move? If one of the requirements are that the chair should be ergonomic, have you accurately scoped out what ergonomic actually means? Have you checked out the United States Department of Labor's Occupational Safety and Health Administration, otherwise known as OSHA, about what they mean as ergonomic? If the chair does roll, is one of the requirements for some type of brake to stop the chair from rolling? If that's not in the requirements, should it be in the requirements? And those are all the things you need to think about when you test a chair. That's all the time we have. If you have any creative and inventive ways of testing an office chair, write them down in the comments section below. The most creative answers I will place in an upcoming blog post at tjmahar.com. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and happy testing.